here with us Thank today. You. I have me. to say, based on current trends, I wasn't that surprised when I saw the news about Casper pricing at the lower end of the range. I mean, what does that tell you? Does it tell you more about investors in the market or the company itself? Yeah, I, th I think both. Uh, I, think I think the company has realized, the private markets have realized that the public markets are not going to accept growth at any cost. I think that was the clear message from 2019. You just can't get out there without showing a path to profitability. And, and growth at any cost is not just acceptable. Uh, it's good. It, you need that. By definition, you are disruptive. Growth it should be there. But profitability is what the market's looking for. So I think that's, that's realized. This was a head scratcher right off the bat, you know, because the, right in the face of 2019 to go out there, it was pretty bold on their part. But I think coming down to 12 bucks, I think, is a good move on their part. Because at this point, they are like almost one-time sales. Uh, the closest competitor, Purple, that's profitable, is about 1.9 times. The f home furnishing sector is about 1.7 times. So it's going at a discount to the peers and the, uh, and the sector. So in that sense, you can justify that this is a good price to get off the gate. Now they have to get out there and prove it. And they have to show that they can... Uh, grow revenues. I mean, they decelerated in 2019. They have to show that they can ramp it up and beat and raise, like they say, and to get out there. If not, you'll be punished like everyone else, like Peloton and everyone else. It also seems, as we suggested sort of in the intro to this segment, that the cost of acquiring customers is not getting lower. It's getting higher. And if I think about a mattress, I mean, how often do you buy a mattress also? Exactly, exactly. That's a big problem with this thing. It's very low differentiation. They're more long-term buys. They want to make it more seamless, more effortless, good experience, you know, short-term if you want. You know, you can buy it, return it, you know, this and that. So they're making it easier. But at the end of it, at the end of the day, it's, there is a very little differentiation. It's a very personal thing, mattresses. So it's not going to be very often that people change mattresses. So all those things are going to play into this company. The company, they have to prove that they can still grow in the face of all these things that are out there. So... It's a tough sell uh, on a regular basis. And bringing it back to your first point about, you know, growth at any cost is, is not what we're looking for anymore as investors, as, as the broader market. What does that also suggest to you beyond even just the IPO, but for companies looking for venture capital or other forms of private backing? Do they, are they also being held to the same standard? Yeah, I think there are two phases in the venture capital world. In the beginning, you have to prove that the concept works. So it is growth at any cost in the beginning. Its profitability is way down the road. So in the first few years or up to Series C, D, you can say that growth, you need growth. You need to prove that you have traction, you have market share, you have caught the attention of the market. So later on, in the later stages, and that's been the problem in the past, later stages, the valuation gets off hand. Mm. People jump in, you have the fear of missing out, the media gets in, and all that stuff, the hysteria that comes with, especially consumer-facing companies, people jump on and the valuation gets uh, out of whack. So I think that, that's been the problem. These are good companies at the end of the day. They'll grow into it. You have to wait it out. They're not short-term plays. They are transformational in many cases, like Uber and Lyft and all that. So you have to wait it out. But in near term, you're going to see these bumps and some pressure in the valuation.